Every year there's 18 million new cases of cancer, 9.6 million deaths. So we're talking about hundreds of millions of people living with cancer, many of which experience pain. In fact, 55% of those undergoing cancer treatment suffer pain, and for those who suffer from a terminal cancer, it's 66%. As we know, pain can be really uh, disturbing, it causes irritability, and so at the moment where cancer patients need their interaction and support from family members and friends the most, this pain gets in the way of, of, of their quality of life. The World Health Organization is launching new guidelines to change that. Governments with these new guidelines will get clear knowledge of what is needed, what the steps are to treat cancer pain, and what types of medicines need to be available. These are the normal analgesics. It's also uh, morphine for those who need it, and radiotherapy for, for patients with metastasis in the bones, for example. So it's a very clear set of things, which can be done in every country of the world. And it is not expensive. Most of these medicines are relatively cheap. So this should work not only in high-income countries, but also in some of the poorest countries of the world, where most of the cancer patients are being found. The first level of cancer treatment does not often require opioid medicines, but if the normal analgesics don't work, we need to scale up the treatment, and often that requires morphine and, and opioids. There is a fear that if morphine is too easily available, it will be abused and will fuel the opioid crisis and the addiction crisis. And it's a justified fear. We have to be aware of that and make sure the steps are in place to avoid it. But at the same time, that fear should not avoid that those patients in pain, in need of medicines, in need of morphine, don't get it. There is no justification today uh, for not treating the pain of cancer patients.